Punish the Soviet issue 4 sees Frank and Valeri set up an ambush for Prochenko's wife, catching her USV convoy on a back road and blowing up the middle car to trap them. Frank draws the men's fire as Valeri cuts them all down with his heavy machine gun. Both men advance on the cars, killing the rest of the men and blowing up another SUV until no one is left alive, approaching the armored car. There they retrieve Prochenko's wife, binding her arms and covering her head as they head back to their transport. As they walk, Frank remembers Valeri's story and and how he turned to alcohol to help him cope with what Prochenko had done to him while in Afghanistan. Until one day, the drunken man got his wife killed in a car accident. Heading to the safe house, the men wonder how the woman stays alive. Since looking into her, they found she is Prochenko's fifth wife, and none of the others made it past three years with him, except for her. Larry says that maybe he got bored with his other wives or they did something stupid, meaning they soon had accidents or disappeared. He asks Zenaida what he sees in her and she tries to tell him that she knows how to keep him interested but Frank knows is more than that but the woman knows that they are in charge of the situation so she wants to know what they want from her. Larry knows that she said that before but when they pulled her out of the SUV and Frank knows that when they looked into her it all came together since things began to change when she came onto the scene. Things like military contractors and the move to legitimate businesses for Prochenko. The woman tries to tell them that she isn't in charge or anything, but her secret is that she notices things. Things that could put Pachenko ahead of the game and ahead of his enemies. She says that she was once a model at 15, but soon realized that girls in that career ended at 20, so she saved up all her money unlike the other models she knew, meaning she didn't need to turn to drugs or other illicit businesses to make more money once she hit 20. The woman began using her money to get powerful men to pay attention to her, moving from rich man to rich man or wherever the money took her. Valeria calls her a whore and Zenea doesn't disagree since he's the one with the gun. She says that she knew she had a shelf life since there's always something new to draw the attention of these men. So when she turned 30, she began thinking of the next bit, which was Prochenko. Zenea reveals that she met him in March and she was married in May to him, but soon she knew his attention was drifting towards younger women, something she knew would be the death of her. But she could still keep him interested since Prochenko was somewhat cultured and she knew to be careful not to make him feel challenged since while he's squeamish about what happens to his wives he is detached from them and doesn't care which Frank and Valeri know is just like his army days. Zenaida knew the man lacked imagination and had gotten used to a certain lifestyle something he couldn't maintain with his routine so the woman looked into changing that by getting him out of organized crime something that would take time and thanks to Frank's interference in his Russian operations she was able to convince him to do it. Frank says that that wasn't him who disrupted the operations, it was Valeri, but Prochenko thought it was him and that led Zenaida to persuade him to stop running a criminal empire and to employ her ideas. Frank says that if she reorganized his security as well, but the woman says that that's not really in her wheelhouse. But she knew they needed time to transition into legal businesses, which meant maintaining the illegal side of things for a time, meaning they needed extra protection from the Punisher in the form of military contractors. The two men go outside to talk about the woman, who they know is very distracting. Frank thinks there is a weird kind of calm about her and Valeri thinks there is nothing for her to be calm about, since she knows what will happen to her if she keeps talking. So why is she so calm? The men soon realize and rush back inside, telling her that she has a tracker on her, but it's not in any of her clothes since they searched her. Zenaida realizes a tracker had been put in her left thigh, knowing Prochenko did it because he's a jealous man. Soon two choppers arrive at the cabin, blowing up their SUV as two of them escape into the surrounding forest. The chopper crew use night vision equipped rifles to zone in on Valeri and Zenaida running away, reminding the sniper not to hit the woman, but if they do, it doesn't particularly matter. Suddenly, a grenade blows through the bottom of the chopper, fired by Frank from the other side of the forest. The chopper crashes and burns as Frank regroups with Valeri and Zenaida. Valeri knows that the ground troops will soon be coming for them, and they probably already have a perimeter set up. Frank knows the local police will soon arrive and be killed, blowing this whole operation out of the water. Going to get Zenaida, they tell her that if she wants to live, she has to come with them and tell them what she knows. She can say yes or no and the woman immediately says yes, so the trio head deeper into the forest as Frank remembers Valeri's wife was killed in the car wreck where all he got was a broken nose and soon his sons disowned him, which made him realize that he had no right to live. But after a while, Valeri began wondering if 
there was something he could do with that. Punisher Soviet issue 4 slowed the story down a little bit as we got quite a big dump of exposition from the villain's wife, which I actually found to be quite a cool twist on the cliche mob boss trophy wife who is really just there for looks. I really like that Garth Ennis kind of made her a bit more of an interesting character and kind of a smarter character than what would usually be that character. I really enjoyed watching Prochenko's wife almost manipulate Frank and Valeri in a way into listening to her and consider her words. Frank also recounting Valeri's origin on how he became kind of the Russian Punisher was great as well and shows Frank kind of sees him as a kindred spirit to him and as a man who understands what needs to be done. So I'm looking forward to their partnership continuing over the next two issues. I'm going to give this issue an 8.5 out of 10.